the final details. A frog, dragonflies, a snail, and another lily bud. Come color up all these little details with me so we can finish off this large two-page spread. I am starting with the frog and I wanted something more like an olive green to blend into the swampy water. Although as I was coloring in the frog, I noticed it was a tree frog and not an aquatic frog. Oh well, doesn't matter. I begin with a base layer of earth green over the whole frog to give myself a starting point. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. Welcome back to the Kirby Rosanes' Worlds Within Worlds Whale Double Spread. These are the final details and that is it. I hope you've been coloring along with me. And the coolest thing happened last week. I hit 500 subscribers and I'm over the moon about that. So I want to thank everyone who has subscribed so far for doing so and helping me reach what seemed impossible a year ago. I'm so happy to have reached this milestone and I am happy you helped get me there. So thank you. Now back to the frog. I then come in with sepia and I add in shadows following the line art under the belly, on the limbs, and a little on the back. I use chrome green oxide for the top of the frog, including all of the legs. I add in more layers where I put the sepia to help keep up the contrast for the shadows.
I add in a layer of olive green yellowish, which definitely increases the olive tones to the frog. I add that in the same area as I added in the chrome oxide, keeping it to the top of the frog. I want the belly to remain light. I touch up the shadows with more chrome oxide as I want the contrast to remain higher so the shadows don't get washed out with the various layers. I also add in more sepia to help with this and to get the shadows a little darker at the darkest parts. I add in another layer of earth green to the belly of the frog, then I touch up the back legs with more olive green yellowish, and that is one frog ready to go for a climb? I'm sure that's a tree frog with the sticky fingers. Anyway, on to the dragonflies, and I come in with burnt sienna for the body. I then blend in dark sepia over the body to help tone down the burnt sienna. I add in black for the eyes. At this point, I come in with cobalt blue to outline the wings. I added in cobalt green to the center, and I personally didn't like it, so I blended in light cobalt turquoise on top. This was the only dragonfly to get cobalt green on the wings. But if you like it, go with it. I'll work up two more dragonflies, then speed through to the snail. I come in with burnt sienna for the body, then I layer in sepia to darken the body. I add in black for the eyes. I outline the wings with cobalt blue, then I fill them in with light cobalt turquoise.
Next, drag and fly and I begin with a layer of burnt sienna for the body with sepia blended in on top. I fill in the eyes with black, then I outline the wings with cobalt blue. I fill in the wings with light cobalt turquoise, and now I will go and speed through the remaining four dragonflies to get to the snail. Hopefully it is clear what I did. The snail is where I will slow down once again. If this is your first time here, welcome! This is the final part of my whale video series as I work through this large two-page spread. I have the rest of the playlist linked above, but feel free to jump in right here. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button to stay informed of when the next color along begins. I wasn't sure what color to work up the snail, so I just made it brown-ish. I came in with a layer of burnt sienna over the whole snail. I do give a couple extra layers under the curl of the snail and near the middle of the curl. With sepia, I really build up the shading and shadows for the whole snail. I want to show that the shell curls over itself a little so it will cast a shadow over the center part. The shell will also cast a shadow on the body, so I add in shadows where it overlaps with the body.
I add in a layer of terracotta to the lighter areas of the snail and shell. I then blend in sepia over the whole snail to bring it all together. I add in a little extra at the shadows for the contrast. Okay, two more dragonflies, then I will move up to the lily bud at the top with the lost element for the next page. For this hieroglyph, I come in with terracotta, hoping for a nice sandstone color, but alas, it was not to be. I think having this part surrounded by magenta threw off the color a little. I added in a layer of light yellow ochre to give it a little more of a yellowish cast that looks terrible, but bear with me on this. I add in shadows with sepia. The shadows that are obvious are the ones around the edge of the stone piece and near the little crack. But after that, I add in shadows around the hieroglyphs to make it look like they are popping up off the stone. This layer is light, I'm just feeling it out, but I do like how it looks. I fix up the mustardy yellow with sanguine, and I know it doesn't look it, but that really corrects the color. More what I was thinking. I think I need a new camera or something because this still looks a little off.
I go back in and darken up the shadows around the hieroglyphs, really trying to get them to pop off a little more. Then I touch up the ones around the edges of the stone. I add in magenta around the stone to make it look like the flower is more filled in for this one. The whales had water, but this one I wanted to look dry. I also added in some shadows at the base with sepia. I also add in some sanguine to the inside of the bud to continue with the reflected light and make it look dry inside. I add in a little light magenta highlighting on the stone and that is now finished. I zoom out at this point and go through with a little touching up. For the most part, I added in more magenta to the bottom of some of the buds to help darken them a little more. I also didn't think some of the water filled buds looked bright enough, so I added in more cobalt blue as well as more light magenta to blend in with the top of the bud. And that really covers all of the touching up I did for this page. Obviously I should move the clips and fill in underneath, but I'm just thinking of leaving it as is, a quirk of my coloring process. Thank you all for joining in and coloring along with me. Let me know below or on social media how your whole whale picture turned out. I'm so curious. This was a long process. Getting all of the background filled in, I hope everyone kept up. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me and helping me get to 500 subscribers. If you found this useful, please like and share so others can also find this video. If you want more like this, I have another video where I'm coloring up butterflies if you want more insects. Check out that video up here, and until next time, happy coloring!